Welcome to the History Talks. Today we'll be continuing our series on ancient Rome by talking about Emperor Caligula. If you missed our last episode or wish to watch the rest of our series, please click the I icon in the top right of the screen. Gaius Caesar Germanicus, or Gaius Caesar Germanicus, nicknamed Caligula, or Little Boots, in re reference to his first time meeting a battalion of troops being in the dress of a common soldier, became the third Roman emperor on March 18th, 37 AD, after being left to Principit by Tiberius, and he was confirmed by the Senate two days after the previous emperor's death. At his ascension, Caligula was very popular, partly because people did not like Tiberius and were simply happy to have a new emperor, and partly because of his treatment of Tiberius's will. The aforementioned will both gave Caligula office and distributed wealth among the commoners of Rome, a precedent established by Julius Caesar, and that seems to be continuing through Augustus and Tiberius. Despite canceling the will so that he could become the sole emperor, Caligula adopted Tiberius Gemellus as his son. He then also held a large public funeral, recalled a number of banishments, made certain positions that had become appointments under the empire elective again, and most importantly, he not only honored the payments to the public good in Tiberius's will, but added onto it additional gifts. And he made the state's finances public, something that was under the case under Augustus, but not Tiberius, and he cut the sales tax. Additionally, he seemed to be good at foreign relations. He returned territory that had been seized as providences back to client kings, and in turn, the client kings were helpful for, to him. For example, King Antiochus from a region in Syria was able to resolve on his own a major banditry problem in the Roman province of Calicia. During his reign, Caligula expanded the Roman Empire to the rest of North Africa, conquering the province of Mauritania, or what is now Morocco in western Algeria. He also made the radical move to allow members of Romanized Gallic tribes, meaning Gallic tribes that had converted into Latin speakers and had received some of the rights that Roman citizens living outside of the city itself would have had, he allowed them to hold public office in Rome, beginning with the Aedui tribe, who sometimes called themselves brothers of the Roman people. Despite this good first impression, Caligula is overall remembered even worse than Tiberius, to the point where, when describing the deeds of Caligula, the author Suetonius at one point writes, As his deeds as an emperor have now been narrated, now too must his deeds as a monster. While we can't be certain of every claim that was laid against Emperor Caligula by Roman authors, some of them are, he imported several statues of the gods from Greece, and then had them decapitated so he could replace the heads of the statues with statues of his own. He built a temple for the imperial cult, which he adorned with a giant pure gold statue of himself, which was supposed to be dressed each day with whatever Caligula was wearing that day. He had exotic birds like flamingos and peacocks used for temple sacrifices, though it's not clear if this was simply sacrifices to the gods or if all, they were also used in Peruspice. He got very mad if anyone talked about Agrippa, and more specifically the strength of his relationship to Augustus. He accused his own grandmother of secretly being a lone born, and then he used her body to warm the fire in the dining room after she passed on. He had Tiberius Gemellus, the same that he adopted, executed. He slept with the wives of important senators and then bragged about it, one of these wives being his own sister. A client king on a state visit to Rome, he had fight in the Colosseum as a punishment for coming in wearing a fancy purple cloak. Most famously, he gave his horse Incitatus property similar to what a Roman aristocrat had, including an entire house and a cohort of slaves. And then he proclaimed that he was going to make the horse a consul, though it's not known if he actually went through with that. And then most ironically, he gave himself the title Greatest and Best of Caesars. Eventually, Rome fell into a financial crisis just a year or two after Caligula's reign began, which, depending on the author, is either attributed to his continuing to be overly generous with public spending, or his spending public expense on a lavish lifestyle. His approach to the problem came twofold. He accused people of treason to seize their property, with similar methodology to Sejanus. And he suddenly increased taxes, including adding sales taxes on just about every commodity that you could think of, though in many cases these taxes were unenforceable because the people in charge of enforcing thought they were ridiculous. 
And then Caligula, he made a major contribution long term in the form of being the start of the Julio-Claudian dynasty. Previous emperors were part of the Caesar family, of course, but Caligula emphasized far more than them the importance of his family as a whole, and he argued with the Senate about descent and where parts of his family line were from. And that concludes today's episode about Emperor Caligula. Tune in next time to learn more about Caligula. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and if you want to learn more about the Roman Empire. And I will see you next time.